this, the, the, the job of, of being a cop is detrimental to human psychology. And, and that's what we need to kind of remember is that they, the, the people that decide to become cops are still people, right? And now let's think about it. Let's think about what cops have to deal with. Cops don't have to deal with uh, the, like, like the good parts of humanity, right? Like cops don't get called for, for like celebrations, you know? They're getting called to, for, to see the worst of everybody. That's what they're getting to see. Uh, they, they get to see the dregs of society, the lowest of the low, and that's what they associate the rest of humanity with. Right. That's that's the that's the psychology that we're dealing with. Right. Everybody ends up being a criminal because that's all you deal with. You just deal with criminals constantly, nonstop. Right. So by the time the eighth person pees on you, you're just like everybody wants to pee on me. And I don't like that. I just fucking wash these shoes, man. I just wash these. Sh Fuck that shit. Fuck that. I'm going to get my baton. I'm going to get my gun and pistol whip some people. That's what happens. Because all you see is the dregs of society. No one's calling cops for celebrations, right? No one's calling a cop and being like, hey, man, you got to come in here because my fucking neighbor just baked these cookies and they are incredible. They were mind blowing. Those cookies are going to blow your fucking dick off, bro. And those cops are like, hey, man, I'm vegan. And he's like, oh, they made freaking cookies, dude. No one does that. No cops getting invited to summer graduation parties playing fucking hacky sack and shit. No one's doing that. Well, that would change the whole dynamic that that, that citizens have with cops. <laughs> like that would completely change everything. But that's also that's that's kind of part of the thing of like why people talk about community policing, right? Uh, having members of the community be the police force in the community. So so you can have this uh, this community policing organization take care of community based issues. Um, you know, you know, calling the cops should be for big things, uh, for for big dangers, things like that, right? Especially now, especially now that they have military grade weapons. Um, well, we just we, we had an incident uh, in our neighborhood recently that was like crazy. Like trees were blocked up. They had like M16s out and shit. Like it was nuts. And it was and uh, to me it was like that should be what co like cops should be called for like high escalation shit. Can I tell a story? My wife wants to tell a story. That's the camera. Um, is this the microphone? This part's the microphone. Okay. So back in the day when I was a pretty big police advocate and I wrote an editorial about like how police can totally be good. And they, they still can totally be good and I have friends who are police and everything. But a uh, funny story about that needing to call police only when it's like absolutely necessary. Uh, I thought my um, gas oven was leaking. So I called my landlord at the time in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I was like, yo, seems like gas stove is leaking. And he told me to call the cops. And I did. And a police officer, one singular male police officer came over and uh, helped me with my stove. It was good. Nothing bad happened. Just kind of hilarious in my opinion with the context just throwing that out there but i don't know i don't feel like that that's not a cop's job though <laughs> like, right. like okay. why the fuck like why is a cop being called to turn off the stove he totally came and helped. that's kind of i mean that's cool like that's what they that, like but that's not what a cop's supposed to come do <laughs> right it's like like firefighters are like my kid's stuck in a tree call the firemen no firefighters are supposed to put out fires that's what they're supposed to do. What the fuck? Just like, they're like my neighbor. Protect the community. They're supposed to protect That's the community, the right? Neighbor. But see, here's the thing. Like, if a noise complaint is called, you don't need a cop showing up in a goddamn F-15 with a with a <laughs> fucking rocket launcher to be like, turn the music down. That's a neighborhood issue. That's where community policing comes into play. That's why these high escalation things happen, right? And community policing would be good because, like, they know the neighborhood, right? So even if it's, like, a domestic issue, it's like, all right, you have you have a, a, a couple and one of them, ha you know, like, uh, somebody in that couple has a schizo uh, they're, they're schizophrenic. Sometimes they go off their meds. The community cops are going to know that. The problem is the cops in, the, in this situation are not from the community. They're not from the neighborhoods. So they don't really know. So then it becomes a tense high escalation situation with somebody that has a mental illness illness guns are drawn things escalate things go crazy right and 
but but that's but that's the thing is the psychology of these cops is not meant to to de-escalate the situation it's not meant to protect and serve right the the way they look at it and this is true is like the way cops look at it is that they're they're going to battle with the citizens right it's us versus them again and and they and especially if they think that uh when they go into these situations that their lives are in danger because they're in a situation where where they only see the dregs of society so they automatically expect the worst out of people then you're going to get into a defensive head state where you're going to want to like come attack some shit. So, you know, the psychology of these cops is is um is not great, which is also part but but they're also doing things that they shouldn't be doing. A and the way the 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 job of a cop is pitched is like you, you know, you fucking look at these movies where it's like Dave Bautista gets a fucking Uber with Kumail Nanjiani and they're throwing propane tanks out of the back of the car. You know, there's rocket launchers. It's lethal weapon. It's this high energy thing. It's this high adrenaline thing. But it's but it's not. Most of most of being a cop is coming over and turning off stoves. And then you got to fill out paperwork for that shit. <laughs> That's not exciting. They have this all this pent up adrenaline, and then when that one exciting moment happens, they're just like, "Yes, get all of the artillery. Let's do this." And it's a fucking cat stuck in a tree. They're like, "Let's use our M16s to shoot the cat out of the tree." It's like, "Fuck, <laughs> it's, it's a bad idea." Right? So then it's like, "Oh man, some guy selling Lucy cigarettes. I'll put him in a chokehold and slam him into the fucking ground." Because they have all this pent-up aggression, and there's no de-escalation behind it, right? It's it's all this us versus them. It's 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 me or them. It's the psychology of it is like it's the enemy. They're the enemy. It's like no, they're people that you're supposed to protect and serve. There might be something wrong. That's why they called the cops. So if we if we break everything down, and we kind of compartmentalize like. Uh, this is for community policing. This is for the city police. This is for the state police. This is when the FBI comes into play because it's like larger conspiracy, to whatever. Right. But but it all like there has to be an, uh, an incremental way of looking at uh, at the criminal justice system. But the criminal justice system doesn't even give a shit about cops, really, until it comes to the point of like, hey, you you killed an innocent black guy. You choked him out using a legal maneuver. And it's just like, his life was in danger. Was it? Was it really? Because in that video, like his life wasn't in danger. It's not an us versus them thing. Like Daniel Pantaleo didn't have to do that. There was a lot of aggression. So as an individual, once again, going back to the individual, as an individual, Daniel Pantaleo should be um, reprimanded for what he did. He absolutely should be reprimanded for what he did, right? That's how you show the cops that they are part of the system that they represent, not above it. But hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections, where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring what's going on uh, in, in my life. So if you enjoyed this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY, independent, socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.